So, you know, the interesting thing at 14 years old, the opportunity I was given was composed really of three important elements. One was a really uh, good family, which encouraged me. Third was a mentor. Uh, second was a mentor, and third was an infrastructure. Sure. So, you know, in, I was born in India in 1963. I was born in Bombay, but I had a dual life even in India. You know, most Indians today don't have the experience of growing up in a city, but also experiencing the Indian village. So I would spend at least one third of my time in a small Indian village in near uh, Rajapalam called Mohur, where my grandparents were farmers. In fact, my grandmother was a Sid there but she was also a farmer, so was my grandfather. So I grew up in this very dual environment, even in India. So I had the experience of Bombay, a very cosmopolitan, completely chaotic world, and then this very serene, emerald, you know, landscaped uh, village in India where I would see my grandmother get up in the morning, 30 people would be lined up, she would do Samudraka Lakshanam on them, which is review their face, do pattern analysis, and then give them different types of uh, modalities of medicine, be it massage, herbs, etc. So she was practicing what we call personalized medicine today. So I was fascinated by that. So my early life in India was this village environment plus the city environment, right? And in both those environments, uh, I was always compelled to find some type of unity across these very disparate worlds. So when we moved to the United States in 1970, this very traditional Indian family lands in Patterson, New Jersey. Now this is 1970, uh, literally on my seventh birthday we landed in the United States, December 2nd. And here this Indian family moves to Patterson, New Jersey, and if people know Patterson, New Jersey is one of the poorest city in the United States. And in that city you have the end of the post of Vietnam War. So you have hippies, drugs, sex, drugs and rock and roll. That's America. And this very traditional family moves into there. So again, you have these two worlds where you have to try to mitigate them. So that was sort of the theme of my entire life. How do you bridge these two worlds? So my early life went from Patterson, New Jersey, where my parents are very hardworking immigrants. My mom was a mathematician and my father was a chemist. Both of them had extremely good jobs in, in Bombay. My mom was the head of the math department at Don Bosco, and my dad was the head of manufacturing for Gopal Sanganya. So they could have stayed in India, but my parents are interesting people. They wanted adventure, and they wanted a different life for their kids. So they moved to Patterson, New Jersey. The recession hit, right? So jobs were very hard. And then every year, over those seven years, whatever money they made, my parents would move to the best school systems. So within seven years, Livingston, New Jersey is probably the wealthiest, top 10 wealthiest cities in the United States. So my parents moved there primarily for the school system. And when I came there, my sister and I were the only two Indians among 4,000 students. Predominantly Jewish high school, and Jewish uh, high schools that people know uh, are very, very, as, as Indians are into academia, and so it was a very competitive environment. So here was this Indian student who not only is good at athletics, which is what I was good at, but I was also good at, at, at academics. So it was a little bit hard for the Jewish people in that high school to swallow. So you can imagine the amount of discrimination and competition I would have gone through. So I graduated second in a class of 1,200 and uh, went on to MIT. But it was when I was in Livingston, um, I got exposed to the opportunity to work in Newark. So what had happened to me was in 19, early 1978, I was one of 40 students in the United States, the only Indian who was accepted into a program to go to New York University. So I was only 14, that program only accepted students in their 17, 18 years old. So here a young Indian student gets accepted to study computer programming at one of the most prestigious mathematical institutions in the world, Quarant Institute of Mathematical Sciences at NYU. So I would uh, take a bus to Newark and then take a train into New York City in the summer. Very dangerous place at that time, right? So I learned, you know, immersed myself in computer programming, learned seven different programming languages, 
by the time I came back to school that fall, I had actually finished all the math courses and was quite bored and I actually wanted to drop out of high school. So my mom introduced me to this very interesting gentleman who was a physicist, Leslie P. Michelson, who worked at the University of Medicine Dentistry of New Jersey and there begins the story of the invention of email.